Hello again, everyone. We are back to James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. I'm going to read chapter six and seven today. Sponge, sponge, come here at once and look at this. At what? It's a peach, Aunt Spiker was shouting. A what? A peach, right up there on the highest branch. Can't you see it? I think you must be mistaken, my dear Spiker. That miserable, miserable tree never has peaches on it. There's one on it now, Sponge. You look for yourself. You're teasing me, Spiker. You're making my mouth water on purpose when there's nothing to put into it. Why, that tree's never even had a blossom on it, let alone a peach. Right up on the highest branch, you see? I can't see a thing. Very funny, ha ha. Good gracious me. Well, I'll be blowed down. There really is a peach up there. A nice big one too, Aunt Spiker shouted. A beauty, a beauty, Aunt Sponge cried out. At this point, James slowly put down his chopper and turned and looked across at the two women who were standing underneath the peach tree. Something is about to happen, he told himself. Something peculiar is about to happen any moment. He hadn't the faintest idea what it might be, but he could feel it in his bones that something was going to happen soon. He could feel it in the air around him, in the sudden stillness that had fallen upon the garden. James tiptoed a little closer to the tree. The ants were not talking now. They were just standing there, staring at the peach. There was not a sound anywhere, not even a breath of wind, and overhead the sun blazed down upon them out of a deep blue sky. It looks right to me, Aunt Spiker said, breaking the silence. Then why don't we eat it, Aunt Sponge suggested, licking her lips. We can have half each. Hey you, James, come over here and climb this tree. And there's a picture of them. Looking way up. James came running over. I want you to pick that peach up there on the highest branch, Aunt Sponge went on. Can you see it? Yes, Auntie Sponge, I can see it. And don't you dare eat any of it yourself. Your Aunt Spiker and I are going to have it between us, right here and now, half each. Get on with you, get up. James crossed over the tree trunk. Stop, Aunt Spiker said quickly. Hold everything. She was staring up into the branches with her mouth wide open and her eyes bulged as though she had seen a, joke, a ghost. Look, she said. Look, Sponge, look. What's the matter with you, Aunt Sponge demanded. It's growing, Aunt Spiker cried. It's getting bigger and bigger. What is? The peach, of course. You're joking. Well, look for yourself. But my dear Spiker, that's perfectly ridiculous. That's impossible. That's, that's... Just wait a minute. No, that can't be right. No, yes. Great Scott, that thing really is growing. It's nearly twice as big already, Aunt Spiker shouted. It can't be true. It is true. It must be a miracle. Watch it, watch it. I am watching it. Great heavens alive, Aunt Spiker yelled. I can actually see the thing bulging and swelling before my very eyes. Chapter seven. The two women and the small boy stood absolutely still on the grass underneath the tree, gazing up at this extraordinary fruit. James's little face was glowing with excitement. His eyes were as big and bright as two stars. He could see the peach swelling larger and larger as clearly as if it were a balloon being blown up. In half a minute, it was the size of a melon. In another half minute, it was twice as big again. Just look at it growing, Aunt Spiker cried. Will it ever stop, Aunt Sponge shouted, waving her fat arms and starting to dance around in circles. And now it was so big, it looked like an enormous butter-colored pumpkin dangling from the top of the tree. Get away from that tree trunk, you stupid boy, Aunt Spiker yelled. The slightest shake and I'm sure it'll fall off. It must weigh 20 or 30 pounds at least. The branch that the peach was growing upon was beginning to bend over further and further because of the weight. Stand back, Aunt Sponge shouted. It's coming down. The branch is going to break. But the branch didn't break. It simply bent over more and more as the peach got heavier and heavier. And still it went on growing. In another minute, this mammoth fruit was as large and round and fat as Aunt Sponge herself and probably just as heavy. It has to stop now, Aunt Spiker yelled. It can't go on forever. 
but it didn't stop. Soon it was the size of a small car and reached halfway to the ground. Both ants were now hopping around and around the tree, clapping their hands and shouting all sorts of silly things in their excitement. Hallelujah, Ant Spiker shouted. What a peach, what a peach. Terrifico, Ant Sponge cried out. Magnifico, splendifico, what a meal. It's still growing. I know, I know. As for James, he was so spellbound by the whole thing that he could only stand and stare and murmur quietly to himself. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Shut up, you little twerp, Aunt Spiker snapped, happening to overhear him. It's none of your business. That's right, Aunt Sponge declared. It's got nothing to do with you whatsoever. Keep out of it. Look, Aunt Spiker shouted. It's growing faster than ever now. It's speeding up. Pretty big. I see it, Spiker. I do, I do. Bigger and bigger grew the peach, bigger and bigger and bigger. Then at last, when it had become nearly as tall as the tree that it was growing on, as tall and wide, in fact, as a small house, the bottom part of it gently touched the ground, and there it rested. It can't fall off now, Aunt Sponge shouted. It stopped growing, Aunt Spiker cried. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. It's slowing down, Spiker. It's slowing down, but it hasn't stopped yet. You watch it. There was a pause. It has now. I believe you're right. Do you think it's safe to touch it? I don't know. We'd better be careful. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker began walking slowly round the peach, inspecting it very cautiously from all sides. They were like a couple of hunters who had just shot an elephant and were not quite sure whether it was dead or alive. And the massive round fruit towered over them so high that they looked like midgets from another world beside it. The skin of the peach was very beautiful, a rich buttery yellow with patches of brilliant pink and red. Aunt Sponge advanced cautiously and touched it with the tip of one finger. It's ripe, she cried. It's just perfect. Now look here, Spiker. Why don't we go and get a shovel right away and dig out a great big chunk of it for you and me to eat? No, Aunt Spiker said, not yet. Why ever not? Because I said so. But I can't wait to eat some, Aunt Sponge cried out. She was watering at the mouth now, and a thin trickle of spit was running down one side of her chin. My dear sponge, Aunt Spiker said slowly, winking at her sister and smiling, a sly, thin-lipped smile. There's a pile of money to be made out of this, if only we handle it right. You wait and see. And that's the end of chapter seven. Tune in tomorrow for chapter eight.